In this episode, I'm going to show you how I made a 4,300 mile contact with a severely compromised antenna. Hi everybody. Welcome to the channel ham radio dude. I'm super excited today to be able to test an antenna that I haven't seen out on the market yet, or at least in any videos. And this is the MA01 antenna, which I purchased from LI Express. Now the brand name on it is ham space. Let's talk about the antenna. Let's run some tests and then kind of bring it back in here to get an overall opinion or feel for what this antenna is. So let's go check out how I purchased this antenna. This is liexpress.com and this is an online marketplace where you could purchase items direct from China and they'll be delivered to your house. I purchased this. It took about two and a half weeks to get to my doorstep and it cost 62 US dollars. Now the MA01 antenna itself uses four different coils. And as you can see above me, there's all black coils and there's colored coils. And the only difference is the fact that they're colored or they're not. It is kind of convenient to have them in color so that you could quickly see what different coils you have and you could just replace them. Uh, of course, if you are colorblind or something, there are different lengths as well. So you should know that the shorter coils are for the higher bands like 10 meters and the longer coil goes up to 40 meters. This antenna is good for four different bands, 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. As we page down here, we're going to take a look and a couple of things that are uh, piquing my interest, if you will. Now, for one, the title actually says that this is a outdoor GP portable telescopic antenna or telescopic antenna. And we might not know what GP is. So I believe that GP in this sense is ground plane, meaning you need a ground plane to operate this. And I think that's a pretty obvious given thing, but I want to mention that anyway. And this is what we see in the case again at a more close up uh, angle. Now we have the four coils. We have an antenna that's very short. In fact, when you have the antenna connected to the 40 meter coil and the, our little adapter, if you will, that goes from an M6 thread to a uh, SO239 or I'm sorry, PL259, we are at about 1.4 meters in length. So it's a very short antenna and that's why the coils are necessary. The coils will help bring the tuning to a okay location within somewhere in the 40 meter band, the 20 meter band, 15 meter or 10 meter. But on 40 meters, we're gonna have a very narrow bandwidth, meaning if you change frequencies a lot, you might have to tune this or adjust this accordingly. As you get more toward 10 meters, it will be a little bit wider of a frequency range that this is uh, resonant on. So we won't have to tune it as much or adjust the antenna as much. But also we have these ring connectors that you see on the left hand side here. And these ring connectors are kind of important because the ring connectors are what we're going to hook up for the ground plane use. The other thing I want to mention is it is an M6 style thread. So we have a PL259 to M6 male uh, adapter, if you will. That's the black base unit on the bottom left of the screen. And that M6 male screws into an M6 female that's on the coil. And then there's an M6 female on the other side of the coil that screws it into an M6 male adapter on the telescoping antenna. And I mention that because that's kind of inconvenient here in the United States. I don't know of too many antennas that use an M6 thread for their antennas. I suppose you probably could find some sort of adapter that takes an M6 and brings it to a more acceptable threaded length or threaded style rather but I have not done so yet. Now, this is another interesting thing. So we talked about how it says it's a QRP antenna in the actual description, but here it says that it could do 50 watts on 40 meters and 100 watts on 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters, and we should test that out too. But other than that, there are some instructions that are here on the page, and I would probably recommend following the photos more than the actual instructions because the instructions are a little bit hard to understand. They basically just consist of installing the adapter, the black base piece that you see on the left hand side here, the coil and the antenna. And it would be nice to have a standing wave ratio or SWR meter or an antenna analyzer so that you could find the right spot without having to constantly check your radio and here are just a few other photos and, and kind of use cases. So you see some people use them on top of uh, like an air conditioning unit with radio wires and a mag mount. Uh, there's one guy who has this horizontally 
And uh, I think you can see the point here. There's uh, many different ways that you could operate it, hooked directly to the radio. And that's probably what we're going to try today. We're going to try with this wind camp and uh, adapter, and we're going to plug it directly into the radio to see how it operates. And although I don't want to do an unboxing video, I do want to mention that this did come in a pretty nice case, which could be used to transport your system without losing all the parts that are inside of it. So that was kind of nice. Now this foam, if you have this foam, you could always spray it with Plasti Dip and let it dry out so that it hardens and it isn't as brittle per se. But here we are, we have the antenna system. The first thing I want to make a note of is again, the M6 style threads. But more importantly, this antenna itself is a little bit uh, flimsy. In fact, uh, after using it just a couple of times, I did slightly bend the top element. But here it is, telescoping antenna with your M6 male thread on it. We're going to take a look here at each of the coils, and the coils seem to be built pretty well. They're so lightweight, and if you look here, there's your M6 female to M6 female that I already mentioned, and here's uh, your 15 meters, yours for 10 meters, yours for 20 meters, and your coil for 40 meters, and they seem to be pretty well built. I do like this heat shrink or weatherproofing wrap that they have around them. Pretty nice stuff. Uh, additionally, we have that little connector or adapter I was talking about that takes a PL259 and brings it out to an M6 male. Now you could do a couple of things here. You could take something like this, which you might see on a CB radio truck mount or even just a regular truck mount for your 10 meter or any other radio. And uh, I got this off of a CB radio truck mount. That's how I know. But basically then I could screw this part in and this would allow me now to have a 3 8 thread so I could screw it into my mag mount antenna. It, that works really well to be fair. Now, what I did to test this out, I wanted to test out on 40 meters with very low power. And so I used this Whisper device here from ZachTech.com. And I was then able to essentially every two minutes send out a beacon to see how well I was being heard. After about an hour, these were my results. Over the period of an hour, I was heard by multiple stations multiple times for a total of 93 times being heard within an hour. And you could see that I was heard as far out as Asheville, North Carolina, with less than a watt of power. This test was conducted utilizing a Jeep, a mag mount, and, and then the antenna itself. So I am pretty interested in these results because I never thought I would get to Asheville, North Carolina on less than a watt of power. Yeah, this is where it gets good too because I went to 20 meters and I, I hooked this up. And on 20 meters, I transmitted a two passes or a total of four minutes with Whisper. And I know I said it was less than a watt, but it's 200 milliwatts is what I was operating on. And at 200 milliwatts of power, I was being heard all the way in Washington as well as Vancouver on that tiny little antenna there. And it actually does get a little bit better. We'll talk about that in just a moment. In order to talk about that, let's go out to a park. Well, I didn't know it was raining and windy and cold. So I think we're gonna have to wait till tomorrow. We'll see you then. It's still wet, it's still raining, it's still cold. So I think I'm gonna use this mag mount on the back of a tailgate. And I know that a lot of you are gonna say, hey, the tailgate has metal all around it. It's not a, a very efficient test. Well, this was the test conducted under the circumstances that were presented to me. And what I will tell you is this, uh, this antenna was easy to set up. It has pretty decent build quality, like I mentioned, except for the antenna's a little flimsy. And I used that SO239 to 3A24 thread count to uh to put this on the mag mount and that worked out excellent i did install a couple of radio wires on here as well which you don't see let's try w9 fff calling cq parks on the air from park kilo 1012 cq parks on the air cq parks on the air it's whiskey niner foxtrot 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 cq parks on the air cq parks on the air it's cq parks on the air 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 One thing I want to point out is I was operating five watts to start. I did plug in the radio at some point so I can get a full 10 watts out of there, but uh, it didn't make too much of a difference. 40 meters was severely compromised, and we can say it was pretty much a bust, although I did make this one contact, which was a whopping 48 miles. Okay, we do have the 20 meter element on. As you can see, um, I have the antenna in the back as long as it will go. And with radials as well, as a, a magnetic ground plane. So I'm in the mag mount and I have extra radio wires or ground plane wires. I can't get the standing wave ratio to be below 
1.5 to 1, but it's still all below 2. I'm still going to operate it. We're going to try this uh, 20 meters, and then what we'll do is we'll change over to the quarter wave and see how many more contacts we make. Seventy-three and QRZ. Roger, Roger. This is Whiskey Eight Zulu Bravo Romeo. You're three, 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 three into West Virginia WVQSL. Kilo three, Bravo Romeo. Kilo three, Bravo Oscar Alpha. Kilo three, Bravo Romeo. Kilo three, Bravo Oscar Alpha. Kilo three, Bravo Oscar Alpha. Kilo three, Bravo Oscar Alpha. You are a five by five, fifty-five in a park. Kilo one zero one two. Okay, got you about a five three here, West Virginia. Good luck today. I made three contacts in six minutes with this MA01 compromised GP antenna uh, and 10 watts of power. I did try to hook up a full quarter wave 20 meter antenna and at this point with 10 watts, I just wasn't having much luck. So I went to my Yezu FT891 and I boosted up the power to 50 whole watts. Mark and have a great day. Uh, there was a Victor Echo station out there, Victor Echo. Okay, I got the 5.7 in Ontario. I have you at a 5 by 9.59 here in the park kilo 1012. Hey, would you have just a second for me to change an antenna and see if you could still hear me? Sure. This is Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Victor Echo 3, Papa Tango Alpha, you still out there? Uh, Victor Echo 3, Papa Tango Alpha, you 5.4, 5.4. So what difference in the two antennas? It was very nice to be able to swap out antennas and get the signal report from the same individual I just got a signal report from. In fact, I think that's where you could hear that there is a difference in how well your signal gets out with a good or a bad antenna. Now, with that being said, I think we go into these situations, at least we should know in these situations, that when you buy a small coil antenna like that, you're giving up a lot of things for convenience. So you're giving up your antenna capabilities or the performance of your antenna for the form factor of a very small antenna that may fit in a bag. And a lot of people like to operate with this kind of stuff. But even then, I was kind of still on the fence of like, is this a good antenna? Is this a bad antenna? And I would say it's it's, it's not a bad antenna by any means. It's not the greatest antenna. It's not your antenna 2023. If you were going portable, maybe you just use an NFED half wave antenna, which is equally as small when you wrap it up but if you're looking for something like this this one wasn't bad it tuned up on most of the bands or came close to it and i'll leave you with this for 60 us dollars i got on 10 meters i called cq parks on the air but i wasn't spotted and this is what i got Wow, very good. Sugar Mike 7, Uniform, Zulu, Bravo. This is Whiskey 9, Foxtrot, 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 W9FFF. I have you at a 5x7, 57 into Northern Illinois. Thank you for 5x7, likewise, you're also 5x7. Five 5x7 five into Sweden from Northern Illinois, 50 watts and a severely compromised antenna. Now, that's pretty awesome. I did make some contacts shortly thereafter on the quarter wave but I didn't get outside of the United States. So I was really happy and impressed about that. Uh, I love making voice contacts uh, and I love making contacts overseas. It just so happened to work out in my favor at that point. But I think we also illustrated something unintentionally. 40 meters, eh, 20 meters started to get better. By the time we got to 10 meters, I'm talking around the world. And I I think that kind of shows the point of a coil system is, is the more of a coil you have or the lower the bands you have, like 40 meters, the more of a compromise it is. And as you get to 10 meters where there's a antenna that's more toward the correct length, we start to be able to get a little bit better performance. Now, I showed you the whisper. I showed you the voice. And I just showed you making contacts because that's what I do. I make contacts. I, I'm sure there's somebody out there going to want some scientific studies you let me know and I'll meet up with you and we could uh, scientifically study this thing if you're in the area. <laughs> hey, for 60 US dollars, if you have a use for this, great. I wouldn't recommend it for driving down the road at 60 miles an hour. I wouldn't recommend this for a primary antenna, but there are probably some scenarios that you could think of. 
And I want you to let me know in the comments below, what are some scenarios where you might use this antenna? Hey, I hope you liked that video. And if you did, do me a favor, hit that like button, maybe consider subscribing, really helps me out in the algorithm, but uh, lets me continue to make these videos. And I think that's the most important thing. So thanks a lot again in 73.